My question is to the Prime Minister. The Wentworth by-election sent a clear message that people in my electorate want urgent action on climate change and the environment. <coughs> we have just experienced a summer of extreme weather events, one million dead fish in the Darling River, and credible experts say that on our current trajectory Australia has no chance of reaching our Paris commitments. Last night's federal budget failed to take the opportunity to promote the role of renewable energy and show national leadership on the environment. Prime Minister, will you commit to strengthen our environment laws and put in place a well-resourced, independent National Environment Protection Agency that would have equivalent powers to the national corporate regulator and the ability to impose a similar range of penalties? The Prime Minister has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the member for her question. And the government agrees that action needs to be taken to address climate change, and that's why in last night's budget there was a $3.5 billion climate solutions plan that was included in last night's budget. And several weeks ago, Mr Speaker, I outlined in some precise detail exactly how we were going to meet our 26 per cent emissions reductions target through the various measures that we have outlined. And that includes uh, the Emissions Reduction Fund, the Climate Solutions Fund, which provides the reverse auction, which uh, purchases uh, the abatement that is achieved within industry and business and others. And that program has been extremely effective over the last five years. It's one of the reasons why, when we came to government, we turned over around a more than 700 million tonne deficit in reaching our 2020 targets in Kyoto, and we will now beat our Kyoto targets by 369 million tonnes, a 1.1 billion tonne turnaround through the success of our emissions reduction policies. Now, in addition to that, the Snowy 2.0 scheme, our Efficient Energies and Communities program, the connection of the Marinus Link to Tasmania, the Mr Speaker. Prime Minister will resume his seat. The member for Wentworth on a point of order. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. The question was: Will the government commit no, to? No, the member for Wentworth needs to state the point of order. Relevance. Okay. The member uh, for Wentworth may proceed. Uh, my question was whether the government would strengthen our environment laws and put in place a well-resourced, independent yeah. national environment the, protection the agency Wentworth with appropriate will powers. Seat and I make the point to the member for Wentworth, as I've made on many occasions, uh, and that is, whilst that was certainly asked. There was a lot of other material in the question as well, and uh, the, the Prime Minister, or indeed a minister answering the question, is entitled to refer to that. So uh, that is one of the perils of a 45-second question, I have to say. The Prime Minister has the call. Speaker. So these are the mechanisms which will ensure that we do meet our 2030 emissions reduction targets, which we have set at 26 per cent. But I'll tell you what we won't do, Mr Speaker. What we won't do is force businesses to spend $36 billion purchasing foreign carbon credits as a way of reducing emissions, Mr Speaker. And that is the policy of the Labor Party announced on Monday of this week. Mr Speaker, they want, they want carbon credits from Kazakhstan, Mr Speaker. That is the policy of forcing businesses to shell out $36 billion that they could spend on increasing wages. They could spend it on creating jobs, in investing in their businesses, in dividend uh, distributions to their shareholders. But no, the Labor Party wants $36 billion to go to foreign carbon traders, Mr Speaker. Now, over in Kazakhstan, I'm sure they're pretty pleased about this, Mr Speaker. I'm sure they're, they're, I'm sure they're absolutely thrilled about this. Some may call this a carbon tax, Mr Speaker. I'm going to call Shortland. it the Borat tax, Mr Speaker. <laughs> the Borat tax, which will be put on by the Labor Party with carbon credits to Kazakhstan, and I know it. Uh, I know what Borat would think of the Labor's po Labor Party's policies on emissions reduction, Mr Speaker. Very nice. Very nice. That's what they'd be thinking about the carbon trading policies of the Leader of the Opposition, who wants to force companies to send $36 billion offshore, sucking jobs offshore, sucking profits offshore, sucking wage increases offshore. Mr Speaker, the only bonuses anyone is going to get from the Leader of the Opposition is the bonus that would be provided to foreign carbon traders who are just simply saying to the Leader of the Opposition, make the my Prime bonus. The Prime Minister's time has concluded.